And so what I'm going to do in this first section is talk about business plans, but specifically, I want to do an overview of what's called the Lean Business Model Canvas. And some of you might be familiar with this. It's not something I came up with. This has been around for some time. And there's there's various different versions of it. So you, when you search for Lean Business Model Canvas, this term that you see up here at the top of the screen, or Lean Canvas Approach, you'll see a couple of different versions of it, but essentially it gets at the same thing. And what I like about this type of business plan is that it's a, a quick way early on in the process of planning for a business to think through some of the key components of the idea that you're trying to turn into a business model that might have some success in the market. It's used, it was used initially from my understanding and where, where I saw it initially applied is in the technology industry. So technology companies that are by nature much more nimble because they're starting with creating bits and bytes. They don't have to set up a retail location. They're creating you know, software or other technologies. And so it lends itself a lot in that, in that space to creating what's called a minimally viable product, an MVP. And if you've been listening to my show or you've done some research, you've probably heard that term as well, an MVP, which all speaks to the idea of starting as small as possible and then growing from there. And so, and let me know if you can't see my screen, but, but hopefully in the chat, if you have any problems with seeing my screen, just put a message in the chat and I'll know about that. Uh, you should see an example of the lean business model now on the screen. So just let me know in there in the screen that you can see that. Just put yes in there if you can see that so I know everybody can see that. So going back to the concept of the MVP, and you, and you notice up here at the very top where it says iteration, the idea is that you start very small, as small as possible. You validate that there's actually a market for what you're offering, and then you iterate, you grow from there. And I think as I've given this a lot of thought over the years and worked with lots of clients and applied this method myself, that you can apply this to just about every business. I'm sure there are some exceptions, but just about every business. An exception might be, for example, if I'm doing a franchise, uh, I don't know, let's say it's a restaurant franchise, and I'm going to open a Subway or a McDonald's, well, I don't have a choice but to open a full-fledged McDonald's and, and open a spot, brick-and-mortar location, finish it out, much bigger investment. Or, for example, I was in the car wash business. Pretty hard to follow this model there. I have to buy a piece of land, typically build the building, install the equipment, and launch with my full version of the business or pretty full version of the business. So it doesn't apply to every business. But most businesses I have found, even in the food industry, that you can start very, very small, validate the concept, validate your pricing, build a following, and then iterate. I mean, this is not unlike the concept of bootstrapping, right, of starting very small and then reinvesting your profits and growing from there. I think that one of the, the big mistakes I see that people make often is they want to start with the full-blown version of the vision or the idea that they have for a business. And that has a lot of risk associated because you're investing a lot of money up front and you haven't validated that people maybe are going to come to your location or buy what you have to offer. And you've spent all of this time and energy and money to build it, hoping that they will come. So I just want to walk you through this concept and the the main boxes that you have here. I also have used this approach, by the way, in developing new lines of business. So maybe you're an existing business owner, but you want to explore a new line of business or a new concept or a completely different offering. This is a great way also to kind of validate that. So it's not just for software, it's for all kinds of different types of businesses. So what are the main components? And so you'll see the labels to the boxes. And if I scroll down, the way it's kind of divided, if you notice these arrows at the bottom, is the product focus components and the market focus components. 
And of course, the value proposition falls right in the middle. Now, by the way, I'm going to show you in a moment where you can download this copy that you see here, this version. If you don't have it already, it's available on my website, website at thehowofbusiness.com as a free download. And I also talked to this a little bit on an episode that I did about business plans. So let me just walk through this at a high level. And again, if you have any questions, please stop me. Uh, the problem, of course, is first. So what are the top three problems or areas of pain or need that your product or serving is addressing? Now, typically, when we offer something into the marketplace, we're typically addressing someone's problem or need. Although you can argue some products are about aspiring to people's aspirational wishes or status symbols, right? I don't know that anybody really needs a Louis Vuitton purse. Uh, you can still try to sell to that, but Louis Vuitton doesn't sell to that, right? They sell to the need that you might have for what that represents to you, either as a reward or a status symbol. For most of us, we're dealing with a problem or a pain or avoiding a problem or a pain that our prospective customers have. You know, for you, Dragos, with your, your, your healthy foods, you're helping people address this problem or the challenge that they have of eating healthy, especially maybe at work or when they're on the go or if they have busy lives. So that's the problem that you're trying to solve. You want to answer this question from that prospective customer or client's perspective. So as I put in, in, the, in the brackets here, uh, are these current problems? These are further things you need to think about. Are they latent problems? Latent problems are harder to sell. These are problems that people don't know that they have. You know, as an example that comes to mind, although maybe it doesn't correct, correct, directly correspond, when the iPhone first came out, the first smartphones, people didn't know that they had a problem that they needed this for. Now they've got all kinds of problems or needs for a smartphone, but that was an example of something that was latent. People didn't know that they had a need for this. They had to uncover that. That is much harder for us to do, especially as small business owners, because we don't have the resources to educate the market. But that's why it's important to ask yourselves that question. Who has these problems? And then making sure in a moment when I come back over here to this box, the customer segment, are we addressing problems that our target market actually has? And if that's out of sync, then you've got a problem with your business model. So the idea here is you complete this lean canvas is this is very high level. We're talking about a few sentences, maybe a paragraph, bullet points. It's very high level. It's that first version of a business plan, or it might be the only version, especially if you don't need to go get a loan or investors, if it's just for you and you're starting with the very first version of your business, then this might be enough. And what I like about it is often with a more formal business plan, we get hung up on having to write a business plan. We think we have to write an essay or a novel, and that doesn't help anybody. Now, you probably will have to do more than this, this something like this if you're going to get a loan, as I said, or if you're trying to attract investors. But if you're funding it yourself, with most of us when we're doing these first small iterations, we are then this is a great way to kind of gather your thoughts on this idea that you have and to begin to validate if it makes business sense and decide if you're going to go to market with this first iteration, the simplest version of your business, the minimally viable product, an MVP. So we define what the problem is that we're solving. And, and again, it recommends here, this version recommends the top three things, the top three problems. When you put these in here, express them from the perspective of the person that has the problem, the customer or the client. Put it in their words. Yeah. Then, of course, what is the solution that you are offering? What are the top three features of your product, features or functions or components of your solution, of your product? When I say product, I'm talking about product or service generically. And it can be whatever it is that you offer. Whatever it is that you're offering in return for some exchange of money, 
That's what I'm talking about here. So this is not necessarily how you do it. That gets confusing a lot of times for people. This is the functions or the pieces of it, the, the components of what you offer that address the problems that you identified here. So we want to uncover problems that we have a solution for. And those are the ones we want to focus on, obviously. So that's the second part. What are the three top three features of your product or your service? Key metrics. This one can be a little confusing. So these are, as I spell it out here, these are the metrics that will drive usage for your product or service. Activity that drives retention and revenues. All right, so what are we talking about here? The idea is to identify what are the key things you're going to measure to determine what success you had or maybe lack of success to determine what the results were of this iteration, of this initial version of your business. And there are some that are obvious, obviously how much revenue you generated, profitability, how profitable you were. Those are things, of course, that we have to test very early on. If I'm selling Dragos, again, to use you as an example, a packaged food item, and I'm selling it for you know 10 euros, I need to be able to make a profit on that. And you're validating that here. And so a key metric here would be profitability. But you also want to measure things like your following. So how many how many people are now maybe following me on Facebook or Instagram or wherever it is that you are developing a following or how many new clients you have that gave you email addresses? Those are important metrics also because you want to be able to get back to those people and tell them, hey, now I'm doing the next thing or I've opened my physical location or whatever the case might be. That's another key metric that you're going to measure for success. You know, I'll give you another example. My, my daughter is currently working on developing a vintage clothing business, but she's not ready yet to open a physical location. So she's been doing pop-up stores, pop-up events at different markets. And so for her, one of the key metrics, as I alluded to, is measuring how many people increasingly follow her so that she has an audience to continue to offer not only her online sales opportunities, but also to announce where she's going to be next. So one of the key takeaways is building her following. That's a key metric for her in her iteration of her business. Then the unique value proposition, that's, that's critical to the whole thing. What is, what is the benefit? What is the value? What is the single, clear, compelling? In other words, the compelling means that it compels people to take action, to ask about it, to learn, to buy. Uh, the clear, compelling message that states why your product or service is different or worth buying. So this is your why. This is the, the, the reason you're in business that somebody is hopefully connecting with, whether it's because for my daughter, she's trying to, to be reusable and, and appeal to the, the uh, green aspects of her business, of people wanting that, as well as the fashion trend of it. Uh, for you, Dragos, it's about health and about solving their health needs and why you're so passionate about that, why that's so important to you. So you want to begin to, to, to define your value proposition that helps your target customer, we'll get to that in a moment, solve their top pains or problems. This is also the beginning, your value proposition. It's the beginning and also at the heart of what you may have heard called your elevator pitch, the summary of your business. If somebody asks you, what do you do? What does your business offer? Then the value proposition is part of explaining what it is that you do. Right? That's at the heart of it. It speaks again to the problem your customers have, the solution that you offer, and the value of that. And again, it's got to be something that makes sense or matters to your target customer, your target avatar. All right, then as we go to this side of the chart, now that we're moving more over to the market, you know, these, these boxes over here were more specific to your product. Now we shift over and think about the marketplace 
that you're going to be entering, that you're going to be competing in. And so there's three boxes here to think about and to answer. And they're not necessarily in this order. In fact, I think you always start here with customer segments. So who are your target customers? These are also, you've probably heard or have heard me talk about your avatar. And I recommend, especially because this is all about starting small, very niche, that first or second or third iteration, because that's the concept here is that we're going to iterate multiple times until you arrive at that more fully developed business. And then maybe you're ready to launch completely, or maybe you open a physical location if that's the type of business that we're talking about. If I was developing a piece of software, it would be the version that I make readily available. The previous iterations would be beta versions or test version that only a small group of users would use and give me feedback on. Yeah. Or I would only sign up a handful of users. That's what we're talking about here, those early validations. But it's more than, than doing a focus group or asking people what they think about my idea. This is actually going to market, but at a very small scale. And when I say go to market, I mean putting your offering, your service out there to some group of potential buyers. It could be at a pop-up. It could be at a business that allows you to come in and offer lunch, for example. It could be at a gym. It could be at another retail location. It could be any of those combinations. It could be online, of course, as well. It just depends on the type of business that you are starting. But it's about validating that what you have to offer, A, resonates with the target market, and, and B, they're willing to pay you what you're asking for it and that you can deliver that for a profit. So customer segments is the most important. I would say that this is the area that I encourage people to spend the most time on and to keep refining. So when you do your first launches, you're refining, who is really my target audience? Who does my value proposition resonate with the best? Who can afford what I have to sell? Who needs it the most? And I want you to think about that person as an individual person and give him or her a name. I know that sounds silly and very narrowing, but that's what is key to this concept of starting very small, very niche. The answer I get a lot of times, well, what I offer is for everybody. Well, it may well be, but here's the challenge. Most of us as small business owners don't have the resources to go to market and advertise and reach everybody at once. We don't have that money. We don't have the reach. We don't have a brand. We, nobody knows us. So if we take that approach, that shotgun approach of trying to appease everybody, it usually fails because it's very diluted. You're trying to provide value to everybody instead of being very focused. Now, later on, as you grow, you can expand that, of course. But to get started, be very targeted, very laser focused. So you're going to describe here what that ideal customer is all about. Not just the obvious demographics, although that's important, like are they male or female or perhaps they're both? What is the age range? And don't give it a big age range, make it narrow. Uh, what are the things about their lifestyle or what they look for that matter to you and the problem that you're trying to solve, the solution that you offer? Where do they shop? Where do they live? What is their median income? Uh, where else do they buy this similar type of stuff? Who do they visit or shop from that has a similar clientele? All of those things you're trying to identify so that you know the most about this target customer. Okay. Competitive advantage is an important one. Often we tend to dismiss the competition, and I think that's a big mistake. Take your competition seriously. Now, you could argue maybe you don't have competition. But I would say that you do. I think there's two types of competition. There's direct competition. So an obvious competitor. If I'm going to open a sandwich shop in this shopping center and right across the street, there's another popular sandwich shop. Well, that's an obvious direct competitor, right? 
or if I'm going to try to offer the best low prices on, you know, camping gear and I'm competing against Amazon, well, I need to understand what they're doing. Yeah. Some of it might be indirect. It could be that uh, maybe a larger retailer or a grocery store indirectly competes with what I'm offering. And so I need to understand that as well. The better I understand my competition, the better I'm going to be able to then craft my value proposition to differentiate me, to make it compelling. Yeah. Because if I'm a me too, and all I'm going to hope to compete on is price or, you know, my personality or better customer service, those things are very hard to differentiate for us as small business owners, especially when we're getting started. So you really have to learn from your competitors, how am I going to do that better? So as I said here, this is often the hardest part. It is really a, is it really a competitive advantage? And that's the thing you got to really ask yourself. And how were your competitors, competitors positioned back against you? So analyze the competition, let that influence you. And in your channels, that's just a fancy word for how are you going to bring this to market? Are you going to sell it online? Are you going to try to get into a retail store or a grocery store? Are you going to do wholesale? So you provide it to other retails. Are you doing direct to consumer? Is it business to business? How, what is the, that component of your business model? And again, remember that the channel that you're defining here isn't where you want to be five years from now. It's what are you doing for this iteration? For this initial, because this is more than just once, ideally you do this two, three, four times, however many times it takes you to get to a more developed business. So it's not every channel that you might someday want to offer your product through. It's the channel that you can access and that you're planning for this iteration of your business, for this version of your business. So what is that? How will you get your product, your solution to your customers? What is the channel? So where I'd like to start there is there's really two large to high end categories, business to business or business to consumer. And then under that, it's either direct. In other words, I'm going to sell it directly or wholesale. I'm going to sell it to someone else who then ends up selling it to the end consumer. So you want to identify where do you fall there? And then depending on that, identify what is the most accessible channel for you to get your product to either someone who's going to buy it wholesale from you or somebody who's going to buy it retail, whether it's a individual or another business. So that's what we mean by channels. Don't overcomplicate that. That should be simple initially. And then a couple more things to think about cost structure and thinking about all of the different impacts as you roll this version out of the additional expenses that I'm going to have. And, and do I, am I planning for enough working capital to get me through this MVP one so that then I can hopefully make a profit or adjust or pivot and reinvest on and launch my second MVP. And then revenue streams, of course, are very important. What is the revenue model? What, how am I going to make money? What are my projections for margin? And a couple of common mistakes here, which I always talk about when it comes to business planning. On the cost side, it's underestimating expenses and forgetting about working capital. On the revenue side, it's being overly optimistic as to how much you can sell right away. And also making sure that you price it right and that you can source it right so that there's enough margin. So that is the lean model canvas. Again, the idea is that you iterate. Now, um, if I put together a plan for a lean canvas model, an MVP one, my first iteration of my business, or maybe it's my second iteration. I also, what, the thing that's not captured here is I like to give it some kind of a time frame. So I'm going to now uh, test this version of the business for, let's say, three months, whatever might make sense for your type of business. I'm going to do it for three months within this scope that I've defined here, selling it through the channel that I've defined here, trying to reach this target customer that I've defined here. And at the end of it, I do need to stop and then assess what happened. 
And it could be, it's perfectly acceptable that after an MVP, you say, you know what, this business model, I don't think will work. I need to completely rethink my business model. And remember the difference between an idea and a business model. Ideas, relatively speaking, are the easy part. An idea, I'm not saying it's not hard, but relatively it's easier. The harder part is taking an idea and putting a business plan under it that allows me to take it or a business model, rather, business planning is part of it, but a business model that allows me to make a profit offering that product or service. Because if I can't make a profit with it, or I can't validate that someone's going to even buy it at the price point that I'm offering, then I have no business, right? And we'd rather know that by testing it on a very small scale than going and launching and investing a larger amount of money and time and resources, and then finding out that there's no market or that the business model doesn't work. I'd rather find out that early as I make a smaller investment of time and money. All right, any questions on that? If, if anybody has any questions on that, otherwise I'll uh, share a couple more resources and then we'll open it up for general Q&A for, for tonight. A couple of resources for you. First of all, let me stop sharing here and let me share this uh, YouTube channel somewhere here. Where is it? All right, well, bear with me. I'll bring it back up in a moment. On my website, for those who haven't been there, the howofbusiness.com, lots of resources here, including if you'll go to podcasts and then go to podcast archive and then business plans or just search for business plans. You can always search on my website on this little icon here or here. But this is an episode that I did, episode 382, where I talk about more in general business plans. I touch on the lean canvas as well. But the reason I'm pointing you here is on this page, you can find the download to that version of the lean canvas that I just walked you through. And then if you search online on Google for lean canvas model or lean canvas or MVP approach, you'll find all kinds of resources uh, on this concept of the lean canvas.